Okay, this is overview video number three for the DLive C3500. We're talking primarily about customizing the channel strips today. We mentioned it in another video, but I want to specifically talk about these custom layers that we have made for you guys on the console. I'm going to hit the home button here just to kind of reset. We're back to the mix left-right bus being enabled, so everything that we're doing is mixing to that. So the way that you... I think I mentioned it in another video, but we have set up a couple of banks on the kind of input section and output section. We have set them up that I'd like to just let them remain consistent so you can always kind of find things. And then what we've done is we've set up some custom layers. So let's talk about inputs really quick. We've got bank, um, bank, bank one, layer A and B and C are all populated with things that we use week to week. So I prefer you not change A, B and C. As well, we've got layer F um, with some things that I'd prefer we not change as well. So that means you've got D and E as two layers that you can completely uh, manipulate based on the, the lineup that day or if there's just something you want to be able to find quickly or in order you want to put things in. So let's talk about how to actually do that. And it's the same process for the outputs as well. Um, we have on bank two, which is the right bank of the console, we've got layer A with um, a lot of just all the DCAs. So the, the idea is that you can mix the whole surface from this, from this bank. Everything is represented in a DCA or in an individual input strip. And then on the layer B, we've got our effects control right here. So our aux sends that you can mix to. And then we've got the actual returns right beside them so that we can mix to taste the, the affected signals back into the board. We've got the left right bus here as a courtesy. Um, so then we've got layer C um, D and E are, are custom. Now you'll see some things in there and I'll actually show you how to delete those and start over on those layers. So let's say C, D, and E on the, on the bank two are customized for you. And then on layer F, we've got some important things that I prefer to keep um, normal. So we've got the aux masters to send to the on-stage wireless um, in-ear monitors, IEMs. If we were using a choir monitor, like a wedge monitor for a choir, that's here. We've got the butt kickers for bass and drums. We've got that flex channel that has multiple things like leader mics and the computer um, and other things like that baptism mic, just things that are, that are unique that we would want to hear while we're playing. We've got the three matrix outputs for the MP3 recorder, the video in the lobby. We've got our subs and then our main left-right bus. So it's really important to keep all those things in, in that order and findable. So that means you have C, D, and E to come up, customize your outputs or even inputs. You, literally, you can treat them like inputs if you want as well. So let's talk about how to do that. We, we hit the home screen already to get back to kind of a normalized position, top banks. So let's say that we want to line up right now our channel strips and we want to use layer D which and E, which we have cleared for use to kind of put your own things in. Okay, we've hit the home button to get back to kind of home base, we're going to be adjusting layer D of our inputs and layer C of our output section. The way we begin to move faders around and customize is through the surface menu button, which I'm going to show you right here. Surface menu button. And we're going to go to the control tab at the top here. We're going to go to strip assign. And now, of all the things that we can assign to a channel strip, we have um, the actual inputs, we have effects, returns and sends, we have mixes, we have um, mono, uh, monitor channels, we've got DCAs. Um, these are all things that we can um, actually send to. So what we're going to do is we're going to customize on the console, we're going to customize the left channel strip. Now I realize you can't see it right now, so I'm going to give you a view of the screen as we do it, and then I'll, I'll, I'll zoom out here so you can see the whole surface. So we have all our inputs, and they're labeled very conveniently with the things that we do. So let's say on the um, left, so we're going to customize this bank, this bank one, layer D, and there's a few things in it right now. We want to get rid of that, and we want to start fresh. So we're going to go back to our control screen, and we can see down here in bank one, there's bank one and bank two. Bank one, you can see there's some things in here on the, on the D layer. We're just going to literally click on them and drag them out. Click on them, drag them out. Okay. So now we have a complete blank slate. And you'll notice as soon as we did that, though you didn't see it in real time, all of those channels became nothing. No labels, no assignments, right? 
So now we're going to go back into our screen and we're going to customize. So what do we want to have on this? Let's say we're doing um, an acoustic service. We're not doing any drums. We're literally going to do um, maybe a piano and a choir and maybe the worship leader and um, maybe there's some synth stuff with that. So let's say that we're doing, we're going to start with, let's say the piano is kind of a first instrument, is a primary instrument. So we've got piano left, we've got piano right. Let's say um, I'm, I'm sending some synth stuff to you from that same position on the stage. We've got synth left and synth right. And let's say that we're going to um, be using a choir with us. So we'll give it a space and we'll put our choir in le left and right mic. And let's say that we've got an acoustic guitar playing with us on that. Maybe we've got some tracks. And now I'm going to zoom out for you as I continue. You see what I'm doing. Now watch the fader strips as I do that. I'm going to bring the right track in. And you'll see that immediately populates the channel strip with it, with all of its most recent settings attributed to it. And let's say that we have a um, bass player playing with us. It's just a really simple piano, synth, bass, choir thing. Now we have completely set up that track. Now let's go over here to bank two. Or we can just click on the bank and it tends to enable this bank. And so let's say that on our C channel, which we have available to us, uh, we want to have some different mixes at our disposal, that we or some DCAs to be able to mix this really quick. Well, you know that we put on the left side, we basically have some um, choir mics, we've got some piano, and we've got some acoustics with some string stuff and some tracks. So maybe we want to bring in just the DCAs that control that. So we're going to go up here, DCAs, and we know that we've got some um, vocals that are going in there. Oh, I don't have that bank. There we go, bank two that we're mixing to. So maybe we have, let's see, first we have keys, let's put in there. And we've got our vocals. Oh, and we know that like the leaders are going to come up and talk at some point, so maybe that's over here. And we've got our tracks. And then we know we have some strings, we have some guitars, so the acoustic guitar, DCA. And we also know we also know that we have the bass player with us. And if we want to put everything on here to be able to mix, we could actually go to an input and actually put the bass input on this layer. Yeah, so now we have keys, vocals, which the choir would be assigned into for that service. We got our tracks, acoustic guitar, and bass. And now we literally could mix that whole service right here. We've got our leaders over here. And so we would be able to do that. Maybe we decide, oh, I don't like that leader being split over here. So I'm just going to move it within the bank to the place where I want it. And there it is. So that's how you customize your surface for what you're doing.